Hey guys, as you can see behind me, the EG4 6000 XP inverters have finally been installed. Uh, the installation went very well. It took about a full day and a half, I'd say, to get the old inverters pulled out. The new inverters put up, all the cabling run and the lugs crimped and all that stuff that needs to happen. Uh, it is like 95% done. There's still a little bit of cleanup work I have to do, but I've been running these for a couple of days now and they've been absolutely perfect. So in this video, we're just gonna go through how I have everything set up. We're gonna take a look at the installation. I'll pull all the covers off. You can see the cabling. Uh, I'll tell you things specifically that I like, and I'll tell you the one or two things I found that I don't like. Here's a quick overview before I get the covers pulled off. And I do apologize, this is a tight space to film, uh, but you can see I've got the two inverters there mounted on the wall. Uh, they are mounted on some low profile strut channel. That, that wasn't the best way to mount them, and I definitely wouldn't mount them again that way. Uh, the idea was that I could slide them back and forth to line them up, but, uh, but in reality it was very difficult to get this inverter to stay in place because it kept flopping down while I was trying to tighten the bolts. So, working our way down the inverter here, we get to the disconnects. We have a 200 amp battery circuit breaker, as we explained before, and we have our series of AC breakers. Uh, the load breaker is on, but as I mentioned, this is completely off-grid. There is no grid input or generator of any kind, and I don't plan to connect those. The conduit I chose was EMT with compression fittings. I have two one-inch pieces for the uh, AC output, the PV input. I have a one-and-a-half-inch piece for the battery cables, and then I have a three-quarter piece for all the communications cables. Those are going down to a wireway. This is a six-inch by six-inch wireway. It's five feet or 60 inches in length. Runs the full span of both inverters all the way over to the battery shelf. In between both inverters here, I have a small Siemens panel where the two inverter AC outputs are combined. Uh, this is the first time I've used Siemens panels. I typically go for Square D home line, uh, but I actually like Siemens a lot better. I like their style of breakers and I like the terminals on the breakers much better than I like the Square D terminals. All right, tour of the cabling. First, we start with our batteries here. The battery cables come off of various batteries, you can see, and they come over here to a Victron Lynx 1000 amp power in bus bar. These Victron bus bars here, these power ins, are some of the best bus bars I know of. Uh, they are worth every penny. I wish I would have bought these from the start instead of buying, you know, trying out multiple plasticky things. Um, so you can see I've got three main strings combined here on the power in. Each of those strings is also protected by an HRC Class T fuse, and the battery cabling is all 2 aught, and it's from uh, Windy Nation. So the output from that comes over here to a second Lynx power in, which I've turned upside down. And to connect the two together, I have my Batrium shunt sitting down there in the back. Uh, you can see it from the top profile. I had to buy some slightly larger brass screws for it. And then I've got the Batrium shunt module held in place with some 3 quarter inch EMT straps with a couple of leads that go up to monitor the voltage of the shunt. For the positive here, I cut a very thick piece. It's quarter inch thick copper plate uh, and drilled two holes there to connect the two power bars together. And then I also drilled a hole in the center where you see a positive lead coming back. And there's a fuse holder back there and that's just the voltage sense cable for the positive side of the shunt. I've got two sets of cables coming out here going to the inverters. Those are also two aught cable. And then I've got a thin cable here coming out going to a DC-DC converter providing 12 volts to my Batrium VMS. Those enter the bottom of the wireway via a 2 inch uh, chase nipple. And I'll just take a moment here to zoom out so you can see some of the wiring in the wireway. It's all nicely organized until you get to the far left where the PV conductors are. Um, I need to rework some of those at the solar panel end and I didn't want to uh, tie up or cut too much of the slack. So it's kind of tucked away there for now. But anyway, the battery cables are going up the one and a half inch EMT and you can see them attached to the inverter up there. For the inverter output, I selected eight gauge THHN conductors. You can see the black is leg one, the red is leg two. We've got a neutral back there on the neutral bus and then we've got our green for the ground. Those come down the one inch conduit. I tried to keep them bundled together so you can tell which wires go where and those go up into the Siemens panel here, where you can see they're combined with the output from inverter one. Those are 35 amp breakers. I selected those based on the 25 amp continuous rating of the inverters and the 80% D rate rule. And you can see the top lug there is leg one and the center is leg two. And then we've got our neutral bar. Um, so the output for these is four gauge THHN, which then comes back down into the conduit. 
and I've got a very small service loop up there and then it exits the enclosure. Uh, for the solar panel input, I've got one string of panels on inverter two here and you can see they're labeled PV3. It's 10 gauge THHN conductors, THWN actually. And by the way, all of these conductors are dual rated for THWN as well. So the PV comes down the one inch conduit and I've got it labeled in the wire trough as well. And then it exits the uh, spaghetti nest of cables over here and goes out to the solar panels. Inverter one has two strings. Those are not labeled yet, but you can see those connected there as well. And I've got a joint ground in the back for the PV. Uh, that ground serves all of them. I need to get a second ground pulled. Uh, I don't really need to, but I'd like to have one ground going to each panel with each respective uh, pair of conductors here. So uh, again, you can see down here in the wire trough how I've tried my best to keep the cables organized. It's not always easy. This loop here in the back is what's coming off the bus bars for the battery power, which then goes down to my, there's a little conduit there down to my uh, small enclosure down here for the Batrium. Some of this wiring needs to get reworked as well. This is a Watchmon core with an expansion board. And then I've got four relays there as well. Uh, there's the DC-DC converter and then a small terminal block for the 12 volt output. I've got some more stuff to add in here. There's going to be a Raspberry Pi eventually, possibly another block of relays. I haven't decided yet. So the last connection is a series of communications cables here. They are RJ45 terminals on the end. So they come down the small conduit here, the three quarter inch, small service loop there at the slack. Uh, and then they go up into inverter one. Now I am aware there's supposed to be some sort of baffle in here between the battery and the AC cabling. All right, so this brings me to the one single thing, the one single thing I don't like about these inverters. So you can see here, I have the wireless dongle installed on each of my inverters. And the problem with this dongle is that it broadcasts an unencrypted SSID with no password on it. And it's connected to my home network with a password. And even while it's connected, it's still broadcasting that SSID with no password. And I don't see any way in the application to turn that off. And I see other people talking about this online and I haven't found any solution. In my opinion, that's a huge security problem to have this thing broadcasting an unencrypted SSID. I don't wanna broadcasting any SSID. There should be a simple toggle switch to turn that feature off or once it's connected to your home network, have it turn off automatically. I don't know what the problem with that is. I would much rather have these inverters hardwired to the network than have wireless. So they do make an ethernet dongle. The ethernet dongle is $199, 200 bucks for each inverter. So that's $400 I would have to spend for two wired ethernet dongles. I was actually considering doing that. I plan to use Solar Assistant. Uh, it's, a, it's a program that runs like on a Raspberry Pi to track output, input, things like that. And from what I was reading on Solar Assistant's website and other people commenting, Solar Assistant does not work with the ethernet dongle provided for these inverters. You have to use the wireless dongle and that's the only method of communication. And taking a quick look at the display here. So this is inverter one. You can see the output is zero. I have all the loads turned off at the moment so the fans aren't making noise while I'm recording. And we can see it's charging the batteries at 0.26 kilowatts there. Uh, string one is producing 0.12 kilowatts. String two is producing 0.21 kilowatts. And then just a total in the two days I've been using this or so. Uh, we've had a total PV production of 24.7 kilowatt hours from just inverter one. You can change most of the settings for the front display, though I think it's easier to do in the app, but there are a couple that aren't available on the app. Uh, and one in particular is the ground neutral bond. So I'll show you how to configure that here. Press and hold the enter button. Here, you wanna go down to setting 26. 26, and you can see the neutral PE, which is the ground bond. And if you select that, we can see in the upper right hand corner, mine is set to disable. They do default to disable, at least my two inverters were disabled. Um, so if that's something you need to enable, you can go ahead and do that here. Uh, and two quick things I wanted to correct that I made a mistake on in the original video. These fans are actually blowing outward. They are not blowing inward like I thought. And that's an unusual design to me, um, but they are actually sucking air in from the right side, pulling it through the case, and they blow it out the left side. So that is uh, the direction of airflow on these inverters. The second thing is down here, we have an RSD 12 volt output. And I originally said there is 12 volt power available there and there is, but what I didn't realize is that RSD is rapid shutdown. 
So we've got uh, a switch here for a rapid shutdown switch, and this is 12 volt power for other rapid shutdown devices. I've only been using these inverters for about two or so days now, and I am still very impressed. I haven't had any problems whatsoever. Um, the heaviest load I've put on them so far has been the clothes dryer. I think it was around 4,500 watts. I haven't really pushed it too hard. I haven't tried to hit the full 12,000. But one thing I've been very impressed with is, is how stable the voltage output is. When I turn the clothes dryer on or my fridge kicks in, I don't see a dimming of lights like I saw with the LV6548s. And it's funny that topic in particular because when I installed the LV6548s, I remember saying something very similar because I had been so used to the huge dimming of lights from the Ames inverter when something would kick in. And then the LV6548 was a big step in the right direction towards pretty much no dimming, but just a little bit you could tell. Uh, and these EG4s are just so stable with the voltage output that I don't even know because there's zero noticeable dimming of the lights. While I do have them connected to a wireless network, it's separated to a VLAN that does not have access to the internet. So I'm only using these internally. Um, and my plan is to have them communicate with the solar assistant internally, no exposure to the internet. The remote monitoring platform that EG4 provides is, is very cool. I'm, I'm just not a big fan of having every device in your house connected to the internet, uh, especially something like an inverter that's generating power. The other thing to take away from this, as always, is that I am not an electrician. If you're connecting up inverters like this, wiring anything, you should always consult an electrician how you're going to install it if you're not sure what size cables, things like that. But yeah, I am hopeful that I will not have to touch these inverters again. I'm tired of having to come out here and change inverters and change parts. I want something installed that's going to last for many, many years. And I am hopeful and confident that these EG4s will do the job. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below if there's anything you guys want to see. Uh, otherwise, please hit that like button before you go. And thanks for watching.